नमस्कार आज के वेबिनार में मैं आनंद झा आप सबका स्वागत करता हूं टुडे आई हैड ए गिवन रोल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सोसाइटी ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन रिसर्च एंड स्टडीज एंड मूविंग वर्ल्ड आई एम योर होस्ट फॉर दिस वेबिनार फॉर नेक्स्ट टू आवर्स मिस्टर उत्कर्ष झा इज असिस्टिंग मी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ मूविंग वर्ल्ड This is the first webinar organized by Society for Information Research and Studies. It's called SERS. SERS is a eight-year-old organization registered under Society Registration Act, 1860. Society for Information Research and Studies, acronymed as SERS, is a non-for-profit organization, spearheaded by a group of leading entrepreneurial professionals working in the field like information packaging. and consolidation graphic design and development content development and core competency development through capacity building programs sirs is a members membership association for people who manage information and knowledge in organization so in this series this is the first webinar of the society of information uh, research and studies and uh, uh, the co-host uh, with this program is the moving world and moving world is a basically uh, uh, is a new started company basically moving world is a yeah new thinking doing experimental and creative shop we combine knowledge data beauty and audacity to create original long lasting and meaningful work that helps our client engage deeper with their consumers moving world trust institutions but back it up with experience with the some of the most renowned experts in their respective field moving world love working collaboratively with clients and believe in creating engaging experiences that go the distance if that sounds good get in through and let's work together with moving world and that uh, website is movingworld.in you can go and uh, explore the website and whatever collaboration it could work you want to do you can do with them apart from that we have the two eminent speaker with us mr mukul sharma is the joint director and competition commission of india and uh, today he is uh, covering the topic is application of information visualization using tableau and dr shantanu gangli with us He is the fellow in knowledge management division, Terry. An overview. I uh, is taking uh, topic is covering the topic of an overview of the information visualization, types of information visualization, and different tools of information visualization. Now hand over to Dr. Gangul. Please, sir, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Anand, for the introductions, and thank you, participants, for joining this. Uh, uh webinar hosted by uh, moving world as well as organized by society for information research and studies thank you mukul for accepting our invitation to be one of our esteemed speakers for this in fact he is going to the, he is going to be my old friend and colleague and uh, one of the experts in this country in the field of tableau and data analytics so both of us i am going to give you a, an overview of exactly how the uh, you see the entire you know the data analytics and the visualization work basically it uh, and then uh, followed by that uh, there will be detailed presentations as well as almost like a hands holding will be done by mukul so uh, i'll uh, share my screen with all of you now i'm sure all of you can now see my screen can all of you see my screen anand can you see my screen yes sir yes sir okay so my area of specialization i would rather say it's basically i have developed a model called data analytics and visualization experience a dave model now uh, generally i we conduct in my we society search conduct a uh, detailed training program i mean very recently last year only we have conducted a very strong um, program where we basically a lot of people they have participated in fact mukul was one of our speaker also there and we do a lot of hands on training on these areas there are several areas we have gone into like for example on data analytics we have gone into data visualization data storytelling 
some of these areas and how do you create a brand story and all some of these areas in fact we will be coming up with more training programs from the different kinds of professionals who can participate on that but today because of paucity of time and all we won't be able to do it and second thing is that it is it is a paid event what we generally do this entire because it is a whole day program where you have to do a lot of case studies you have to do a lot of hands on practice with the experts and all so that is how we do it it's a paid program with very soon we are going to come up with that so let me come back that uh, i i am working with an organization called terry basically the one of the major motto of terry is creating the innovative solutions for a sustainable future and terry works on various you know the uh, areas which you are coming across here and out of which one of the areas is basically you can say the terry uh, focus areas is like air quality on all now in many cases what we use that there is a lot of tableau and lot of data we generate from the different you know from different uh, focus areas and with the help of you know this kind of visualization platforms and all we can come up with different kinds of models for the decision making process which is a very very extremely important area to look into this is a man who is actually inspired me to get into the world of information visualization his name is professor hans rosling professor rosling is was basically was a global health data expert throughout the world he has been teaching the global health data from the grassroots level to the corporate level or to the global level with the help of the information visualization i got because of the paucity of time i can't play the video here but suddenly i can share with all of you hans rosling is a very leading guy in the field of information visualization but what we are i'm going to take up uh, take you through is basically an information visualizations what say what is exactly and how does it look like information visualization now the current situation is that there is a tremendous amount of you know data flow is taking place you read the newspaper in the ma mails you get uh, i mean in the news you read a lot of you know emails and all which comes to you you have a bank statements you do a lot of spending through your credit card debit cards and all so a lot of transaction takes place so all this is nothing but a vast amount of data so data is everywhere so they we are actually submerged in data now so there is a changing landscape is taking place over the last few decades it was found that the you know the internet have revolutionized in fact it has started helping uh, started giving a new thought to us that how we should look at the how to would create store and retrieve the information on a whim there is a global economy and instant communication have created an explosion in the volumes of data to which we are exposed and the amount of data leads to a amount of possible confusion and decision paralysis there is more data available than we can comfortably process so we need to get ourselves accustomed with all the kind of data which we are coming up we have to do a lot of data audit also and that is very much needed and then we have to visualize it and look at it so it's a very important area and there is a changing landscape is taking place now one of the great man i will uh, uh, the book which i came across this is the book it's called information graphics it was written by edward toffe when he saying that cosmetic decoration which frequently distorts the data will never salvage an underlying lack of the content it's a it's, it's a quote which are taken from the edward toffe one of the most important thing is information communications so we professionals we are in such a stage now so we have to do a lot of information communication what are the real goals what is the core insight you are communicating who are you communicating with what is your insight relevant to the target person or group where when and how the communication occurs so these are some of the questions we need to address actually one of the important thing to communication is through infographics now why we am talking about a infographic especially when you are doing a data visualization and all you can develop a, uh, a very interesting infographics in fact i would be coming up with a new um, the workshop on uh, you know how to design an infographics also infographics can communicate uh, a complex or dull information in a most eye catching way this means you can communicate your message very quickly to your audience 
in fact very less text is there but more of you know visuals application is there sometimes in some of the infographics i came across that they are use lot of videos also now not all information is best communicated through this infographic methods so you need to choose now i am why am uh, because they because there are something like there uh, something like blogs something like stories where you cannot create a uh, infographics where you have to create what is called as you have to like for example if you playing around with the data and you have to you have to come up with a story then in that case you have to do a data storytelling so that is what the area so you have to take a you have to choose exactly how you are going to get into that so what is information visualization information visualization the art of representing the data in a way that it is easy to understand and to manipulate and can help us make sense of information and thus make it useful in our lives and lot of business decision making today is taking place and lot of you know because of this data and all so data is the oil in today's context and you have to understand the nature of data for by which you are playing around in fact you know uh, mukul would be showing you that how you can play around with the data and all i'll give you a very interesting example i came across in fact i have taken it from the you know edward tuffel's book only that there was a person called dr john snow now dr john snow he was a very renowned man in 1869 what he did he found that in london there was a you know there was a cholera break so there are very specific uh, pockets where this entire cholera break was has taken place so what he did so in 1800 he created a structure like this and he has shown the different pockets and especially the red one which you see in the middle and he marked it and said these are the areas these are the pockets where the cholera is affected in this particular locality and this was nothing nothing but a information visualizing the cholera epidemic Um, uh, in london so that was the kind of information visualization was done for him in fact edward of his book if you go through it he has given a complete narration on this particular how he has collected the data and how he has represented this entire thing so a successful visualization when we look at it has several components into it data you need to look into the from data to information you have to create a story because it will give birth to a concept you should have a goal for which you are doing it for doing that visualization and then you have to give it a metaphor that what kind of visual format you should create it because please remember for i'll show you not all visuals are meant for all all the data there are different kinds of data and for each of the data you have to have a different kind of a visual impact so that kind of visualization you have to do so why visualization matters number one visualize lets you things that would rather be unnoticed suppose you want to show something to the people that these are the things they should it should be eye catching so information visualize is the the thing which it can show you the things visualization gives you the answer faster looking at a graph and identify a trend is an instant thing a good visualization give way to research data to play with them to investigate some curious cause effect relationship visual helps to leverage not only the volume but ever increasing diversity of data and the color pictures are pretty and fun to look at so people get attracted when you use a different kinds of you know colors and ambitions all those things you to provide it now how do you organize an information visually you need to understand that so the first and the foremost thing is you have to define the problem you have to define the data to be represented what is that data how do you quantitatively you take the data what is the original data how do you categorize the data you have to you have to get into the deep into those data define the dimensions which are required for to represent the data i'll show you an example where you if whether it is going to be a univariate analysis or a bivariate analysis or a trivariate analysis or a multivariate analysis means the variations like for example the variables which you have taken you have to be very clear what are the variables you have taken when you are defining the entire concept of the data 
define the structure of the data the kind of data you want to represent and define the interaction required for the visualizations what kind of model you are actually looking at so so there are types of information visualization some of them are cartograms some of them them are called as cladograms or phylogeny some of them are called a concept mapping some of them are called as dendrogram information visualization reference model graph drawing heat map hyperbolic tree multi dimensional scaling parallel coordinates problem solving environment and a tree mapping so there are number of kinds of information visualization is today there in the many of these things in the market these are some of the sources of visual information and media out of which we are going to do the tableau today but there are several other information software are available in the market many of them have got a demo model many of them are open source so you should try out from your uh, right now i am experimenting with tableau and wismi which is uh, but you have says media you have a infogram you have a picto chart you have a easel blue graphic canva vanaj seros get about and visually these each one of them have got a different perspective to look at the data to look at it visually so we have to understand first and then only you can jump into that that kind of an information visualization like for example this is a two dimensional data when you are representing something on a geospatial something related to geographical location on the globe so you have to take a geospatial data you have to show a cartogram this is an example of a cartograms which is almost like a area defined but the distance of the cartograms are copies of some parts of the maps depicting some additional parameters of like demography you want to show some population size travel times these are some of the things this is an australian map where i have taken some example of it this is a very interesting case study i came across suppose in us you have to show which are where are the mcdonald restaurant a very interesting case study i came across where it show through a dot distribution map it can show these are the concentrations of the mcdonald restaurants so that kind of data i mean the mcdonald company has taken the data and some other competitors have taken that data and now if they want to bring out a some xyz organization want to have a company on that so they will look into it for more specifically so that's the kind of thing has come up there is something called as a multi dimensional data visualization so there are several kinds of data by visualization i'll be telling you one is a pie chart i'm sure you all of you must be aware of it you do it with your excel sheet histogram this is also like you i you get a graphs of the entire dynamics parameters you show that different kinds of these are very popular ones scatter plotting where the data visualization of two sets of unconnected dots or the parameter values can be shown in some of the examples you will see it hierarchical data if you want to visualize it <laughs> sometimes like this is an example of a hierarchical data when you want to see from one to how many hierarchies have come down so data value compares to one another to the another data value set so there is a which from which master data which are the other subset data are related when you want to show them you want to show them a hierarchy in the data so this kind of a hierarchical data visualization matrix is available so you have to use that kind of a matrix this is something called as a sunbird chart is a pie chart that concentric circles describing the hierarchy of data values so you can show the hierarchy once again so it's called sunbird model so these are some of the kind of a sunbird model you can also use there is something called as a dendrogram now in dendrogram it is an elast it is a, another kind of a hierarchical model where the clustering of the various data sets helping to understand their relations like for example this is a case study of a chronic care uh, improvement so you have the chronic care it is so you have the patient you have the decisions you have the information systems you have the delivery systems now for each one of them you have an another hierarchy from each and every component you have a further hierarchy so you are breaking the hierarchical models so wow who is responsible for what that kind of a dendrogram you can create in your and many of these charts which you see let me tell you many of the information science professionals have joined you can design such kind of a data and this is not enough at science 
if you use some of these platforms you can suddenly come up with such kind of a data and it is very important this dendrograms and all network data so when you have to show you have a data sets and you have to show a lot of network data visualization techniques so there is a network data like for example from male and the female so if you want to see that how many of them are black and white and the hispanic so this is a data which is a <coughs> which has been collected real time and that real time data has been put on a platform on a software where the different kinds of each and every based on the keywords it has shown the breakups of each one of them and it has shown the connectivity which is connected to what suppose somebody is having a, a problem with uh, on uh, say on liver so it is a problem with the hispanic so if it is a problem with the hispanic so automatically that data gets connected to the liver so but what are the other organs can get affected that it will get linked to them also so for an healthcare informatics network data modeling is a very very important aspect alluvial diagram is an example of flow diagram that represents the data structures the different kinds of conditions the size of the balls basically shows that what is the conditions actually and what are the conditions has been closed down what are the conditions are active and what way they are active in fact you can change the color of everything also there is a node link data where basically the each and every nodes which you see here represent the links between the same node this helps that relationship between the data source and understand what is what is that data is speaking about so it has got a very small small circular images or dots which are there so you can have those data and noding linkages you can connect in these cases when these are very popular when you have a lot of big data in uh, you have collected and you want to plot those big data with the help of a node link diagrams that could be useful for you then another one is your matrix when you create a lot of matrix show both the data against each other and bring out a relationship so here you can see these are the predicted values and <laughs> this was taken from a you know from a movie where i mean i mean i mean the platforms like netflix or your you know prime video and all they collect they do a lot of you know comparison when if you have a netflix and a prime video if you collect the data from there so you can create a matrix to see what is the i mean you can come up with a predictive analytics that which are the kinds of programs which are of most importance to different kind of people so that kind of matrix you can create into that there is a temporal visualizations it talks about linear graphs temporal visualizations because it has already a start and a finish that is the most important thing like for example connected scatter plot where plot is the for two variables taken for the data set throughout the picture you can see it has started from somewhere it has ended from somewhere so it is a journey it is a path you can show a scatter plot like this there is something called as a polar area but the polar area diagram looks like a standard pie chart but it you can see it has got bifurcations now for a, it this is a basically it shows the size is evaluated based on the you know the i mean like for example in a, each and ex every example the breadth the the uh, the uh, what do you called the thickness of the bar which you see here it shows the population size so the components are taken which are basically affected and it is making an example of united states and china together together with the two countries the if you get a uh, like for example gdp data you get their human development index data or you get their world development report index data you can come up with a polar area diagram and you can for each and every component so on an economic scale on other health scale or different scales looking at the entire you know different kinds of components you can thickness wise you can show for a representation that which one is most important and which was should be looked into so it is very important for the decision making model in a global organizations you have a time series data like for example you have a cpu it is you know it is in use from this year to that year you collect the data put it on a graph so it's a time series data so it's a very common thing which all of us are known 
now i'll come to the, the data visualization uh, now in the which is very popular in data visualization you the most important part is that you need to understand what is data actually so you have the raw data then you have the data tables and using both <laughs> you are giving a visual format to it why you are giving a visual because the person who is looking at it he may not be a data expert but he should be able to derive his thoughts it results everything from that data so that is where you have to play a big role into it so let me show you this is an example i have taken from you know tableau which you know uh, obviously he is going to show you the live where you can see that here in this particular one there is a comparison modeling is being done a cluster analysis is being done by taking two or three data together and each and every there are five clusters are there cluster 1 2 3 4 5 and each one of them have got a different clusters so you can you know imagine the comparison where the concentration is taking place so this is taken from a tableau this is a another example from tableau itself that when you do a show a trend analysis so different kinds of color of the uh, line diagrams can depict a different different things in fact i'm sure the uh, mukul is going to take it up in a big way then there is a something called as you know the uh, this is also a, another kind of a data which you show like for example concentration uh, geographical concentration if you want to see that how much you know the in a particular place how much you know uh, what is the population or if you want to show that what is the kind say for example you want to make a comparison between number of population along with the number of you know four wheel cars so if you want to show so you can have in entire block that both the thing both the data together and you can carry a, take out a weightage percentage and you can can do the calculations of that all these are possible and these can be a even lively also this is another kind of a data suppose you have taken a data like for example shipping there is a four quarters or six quarters of an industry now every quarter how many shipment has taken place the data are collected to various sources irrespective of the sources the data you have collected and you can show on a graphical scale that how the what is the you know the peak of which particular quarter the peak is high and which particular uh, uh, quarter the peak is very low so that can easily be seen here this is a very interesting information visualization for me this i have taken from pinterest in fact you know that i have shown you that there is a something called as phylogeny suppose if you want to show <coughs> the tree the entire hierarchy of your you know you know family structure you can do it through a visualization like this if you want to see the animal and the plant kingdom if you want to see into the phylogeny of that you can do such kind of visualization because see these visualization impact which you see here it makes a tremendous impact on the people tremendous impact on the people and when you show them this kind of a thing and like for example uh, i mean it creates a lot of you know people would be able to understand what you are trying to show them so this is some of the examples i have taken from pinterest now everyday information this examples is very common for all of us we see in the you know we have to find out a route using gps or maybe google map you see from one place to another i am going so this is a example but please understand visually both of them are different here in one hand on the left hand of my left hand side it shows the route if you go by your car if you go by you know by flight or metro or something you see as different data but on the right hand side it shows you through a map so both the representations are different so both the visualization is different the first represents that how do you i mean it is a instructions that how will you reach what are the people specific points you will come across when you are passing through this route and the second one is showing that who intends to drive from say for example from this a point to b point you want to travel so how much kilometer is this going to be 
how much approximate time it is going to take. So that kind of information you come across when you see a map every day on this. This is an example. Say, for example, you know, like the under the tube rail of London, if you take. So if you, this is also an information visualization that even we have also have a metro line. You have the different colors which are there. If these David, David colors, it shows us that what is the path I am taking. So how representative it is. It is nothing but a visualization. There is something called as a visualization called explorative analysis. Like for example, if you want to find out, this is an exploratory uh, geographic map I have taken, where the, uh, the different, based on the population, what is the mortality ratio? So I was, I was going through a research paper where I collected a data, I found that the lung cancer affected in several places are shown by different kind of you know, data which is coming out. The data is collected, calculated with the help of a statistical tool and then it was depicted using an exploratory. So this is a representation in a graph like this. You have a confirmation analysis where you see another kind of data like for example the two you know stock prices of two per baby. So you can see this is basically called as a Brownian motion where you see the continuous basis there is a change in the entire plotting of data is taking place in the two stock prices of two maybe of two different times and all. So there are 19 innovative ways you can do the visualization. I'll quickly I'll go through because time is coming up. First is your stream graph. Now in the stream graph, what we generally say it is a stacked area where basically you can in a particular graph it shows it purposes to visualize the data over time and the different kinds of verticals which have been addressed and these are displays you, you can see the display that it is a twitter value and the and you can see in the verticals it has been represented so there is a way of representation of this stuff. there is something called as a sankhya diagram is used to visualize the quantitative flows and their proportion to one another the thickness of the lines depends upon the amount of magnitude of the flow that how much flow it is taking place so that is called as a sankhya diagram like for example you can see here in this the different categories are taken this is a customer web path analysis was taken and whenever you are calculating each and every category on a real time basis the entire visualization gives uh, creates a dashboard for the people and say that which are the products, which are the components, which are the items I should bring in and in on the social media platform or maybe on the websites and all what are the things are picking up the you know the eye, eye catching of the people and all. So all those things can easily be viewed in these areas. So it's all you can say it's basically on a visualization. Now this is called as a chord diagram where you see an interrelationship between the two groups. So values of the groups or entities are, are organized in a circle and the relationship where they are kind of created and shown in the colors of the thing. So each and every one of them, so different kinds of like these are different kinds of groups like Huawei products or Apple products or who are, I mean, you know, different kinds of HTC. This is basically of a mobile, the mobile market. I have taken the data from a mobile market. So it shows the growth of the mobile market and all. In fact, this 19 types of, you know, graph, which I'll be showing you the map, the visualization mapping, I'll be showing you. In fact, in my workshop, I would be telling you which are the, in which are the conditions, which particular graph should be used. In fact, that thing I would be coming up in my next workshop and all. So this is a basically a, once again, a chloroplate map, where basically you can see there is a geographic distributions just like you've seen in the that disease one then something called as a hex map hex map is also a chloro map it's basically a, it's a kind of a you know the size of the regions the you can see the size of the regions and they are equal but only the colors makes a different so there are different colors for that there is an interactive polygon interactive polygon it shows that shape and all same size but the difference is that the shapes are three dimensional. That is the important thing. It gives a very beautiful representation of it. And this is how it looks like. 
on one hand you have the graphical representation like in histograms but the boxes which you see is in a three dimensional you can easily find out the uh, you know the uh, each and every component their thickness and you know the different colors which represents the different kinds of legends so you can have a such kind of a representation for that too there is something called as a ridge line plot now this was uh, developed as a joy plots basically it is basically of uh, when you show in a sociology you want to show the different kinds of like for example you want to show the temperature so in different places from the month of january to december what would be the temperature you know what would be the temperature range it can easily show based on the pics which you come across here so it's called joy plots basically also so this kind of a representation information visualization you can do there is something called as a box plot where you have the different section specific sections and each and every data is represented by one particular box and it has got two variables when you make the the length of the color of the box it tells you that one variable how does it represent relates with the other variable so that's kind of a representation is there interactive decision tree system this is a another kind of a visualization that it makes a tree structure and is very interactive and intuitive like for example you have two variables and in each variable that you have a data and for each data in fact you can in fact in uh, in if you use uh, one of the platforms called wispy you can do such kind of a uh, tree structures and it can it is easily be done it's a very friendly way of doing this particular thing and you can write your legend well, not only the legends but even the details also you can write about it also there is something called as a tree map where the values are visualized in square rectangles into a larger rectangles where it shows the bigger one shows the like for example you know the it is once again for a disease where you can show the bigger one the area the area shows the how much it has infected the cancer how much it is infected the diabetes how much is the so the each and every box item shows the length and breadth of that particular disease and which is related to the economic cost of that particular country so that kind of a representation the, when you look at the cost versus the disease so that kind of a representation you can do with the help of this these are some of the case studies i have taken from different places which i am sharing with all of you circle packing this is once again where basically you see a cluster model and within the cluster model which one of them have got a more emphasis which one have got a less emphasis you can see something like this where you have a one cluster under which you have a different zones and under which zones which one is more effective which one is less effective so you can create a such kind of a cluster effect then you have a 3d scatter plot where is basically 3d scatter plot you have an x axis and a y axis now this particular model is very very difficult to develop it is not a very easy thing it needs a lot of practice and it needs an animation software behind it and nowadays in fact microsoft is coming up in a big way in their lot of you know office 365 platforms to you come up with such kind of a models which where you are going to have an x axis you are going to have a y axis and the another component which you will see it is your z axis so it is a three dimensional model it would be something like this where the entire animation graphics using the data you can see that how x y and z the distribution pattern can give you from all angles that how the data lies in your x and y so it's a very interactive modeling being done and it's a very very advanced modeling which is being done into it then you have a very network graph which is very popular into that where basically when one particular component like for example library information science how this particular subject is connected to multiple areas throughout the world today so if you want to create a connectivity with different subject areas related to management related to communications related to technology related to medical related to agriculture related to biotechnology whatever areas you can think of you can create a network graph like this and i mean it is one of the models which is extensively nowadays used for semantic ontology developing where you put the data that way and you get a semantic graph out of it the one how the one particular keyword 
is related to the multiple keywords and all. There is something called as a violent data, where basically a violent plot is basically the data visualized as a group or a variable shape in the form of a violin and the density of the data points. It is the structure of that it shows. It is a, it's a, it's a kind of a modeling which is being done. And there is a real time tracker also. This is also where, you know, on a, like these tracker model are lo being a lot of used by the sports people. When they are into, you know, football or they are into, you know, cricket and all, they get a lot of real time data in their dashboards. And they make a lot of, you know, decisions, which player will replace who, who will come first, who will come second. A lot of, you know, these kind of an interactive real-time data is coming and they make a lot of decisions. Even a lot of, you know, traffic signals and traffic, you know, movements like in your railways, in your, you know, airlines or in your bus. Lot of traffic movements and all there also you get a lot of real-time data. And in the dashboard of the experts, you get such kind of a visualization. There is something, a new thing which is coming up very soon, which is called as a visual annual report. It is an interactive annual report being model being developed. And it is a absolutely a very new kind of a concept which is coming up where a person can real time see, I mean, in a 3D model, that what is his annual report is. It's a new model which is coming up. There is something called as a holograph where basically you know, Microsoft is working on a 3D model. They are using the virtual reality and uh, which is and along with the virtual reality, they are also coming up with another combination that is the called augmented reality where they are now now they are calling both of them are mixing it up and they are calling it as mixed reality where both AR and VR both will come together. I'll give you an example like for example, one person I have seen this like one person who is, is there, who is delivering a talk, he can speak only in English, but he, he has to deliver a talk in Japan, in Japanese language, where people won't be able to understand the Japanese language, or he has to deliver a talk in China. So there are three things are coming together. The person goes there, we are a wearable like this, and based on the AR and VR, he can, he can have a replica of his entire model then and there on the stage itself. And the person speaks in Japanese or Chinese language. So they have brought out what is they called as NLP, the natural language processing. The natural language processing is getting really getting connected to your AR and VR modeling. And the entire thing is being shown there as a real time. In fact, a lot of big companies like IKEA and all, some of the leading companies, even many of the products which they are now it's into their AR VR model. They're not really actually they're developing. Even if they are developing, they are using something called as a 3D modeling, and now they are putting it in the form of a AR VR modeling. They are doing it. I came across a very interesting, you know, uh, a platform which is called as a mind manager, which is basically called as a mind mapping tool. There is a demo model which you also all of you can use. And it helps to create a lot of uh, interesting visual maps, which I have told you right now, you can also come up with these kinds of visual maps. Some of the things, if you need, uh, want to have a decision making, you can develop such kind of a visual mapping. Like for example, it captures, it can like, for example, you want to do a sport analysis in your organization itself. So you can develop a tree structure like this which will be very easy for, you know, demonstrating in front of your competent authorities. You can organize it and along with the organizing, you can also give the roles and responsibilities based on the structure. So that also you can do. And it is just a drag and drop model they have used. And you can communicate it. So in a nutshell, you can show the entire structure to your competent authority that this is how the workflow will take place. And this would be the decision making process. So entire thing you can showcase in front of me, but before that you have to do a lot of homework when you are doing it and you can put the, you know, these are the people who are going to look into the backlog. These are people who are going to look into the design part, going to look into the query part and some of the things which are already been completed, it can be closed down also. So individual or person wise, you can even break down with their names. You can break down and this entire thing can come to your 
dashboard in your computer. So this <clears throat> mind manager I find is a very, very interesting tool which can really give you a lot of information visualization in front of you. So your all your takeaway is information visualization is designed to help us to make the sense out of data. It can be used to explore the relationships between the data to confirm ideas we hold about data or to explain the data in way to digest it. It is used rightly or wrongly to persuade someone with the data. So that's what is my takeaway. It is your takeaway also. So most important thing that is what in a nutshell I would like to tell you about the information visualization aspect. So <clears throat> thank you very much. And now I will uh, stop sharing here. And now I would uh, request my uh, uh, friend and my another esteemed panelist, Mr. Mukul Sharma, to start with information visualization using Tableau. So uh, Mukul, it is your floor now. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Gangali. That was a very, uh, very useful. I'm sure everybody found the presentation quite useful. Said, I'd like to firstly congratulate everybody that uh, they are here for this, uh, for this workshop because uh, I think uh, uh, there, there's a certain there's uh, fear of numbers that is, uh, that is inculcated uh, in us because of a lot of factors. Uh, a lot of us don't like maths or fear maths, fear advanced mathematics. So that's where the fear of numbers comes in. And then when uh, heavy statistics uh, is used, statistical terms uh, come into the picture in our advanced studies, like mean, median, uh, standard deviation. So our, uh, I would say, you know, number phobia comes into the picture and uh, somehow we forget to have fun with numbers. So uh, before I start my, my presentation, uh, I would say that when you are learning any data visualization technique, especially, you need to inculcate that, uh, that idea of uh, having fun with numbers. Once you see numbers and data as your friend and you want to play with them, the whole scenario changes. When you look at an Excel sheet and you know, get intimidated by it. Oh my God, you know, such huge data. What am I going to do with it? Or you look at a graph and you, uh, you say that, uh, you know, I don't get the naked data. Uh, then it comes to fear of numbers. So, so remove that fear of numbers, love numbers, love data, or uh, love playing around with data. And one reason you will uh, learn to love numbers is when you will start making wonderful graphs. I think that is uh, that is one motivation, and that uh, uh, that will be one of my aims and goals to teach you to make uh, wonderful graphs with uh, the tableau. Uh, one thing that I see with the, the list of participants here is the fact that uh, you know people are here from a variety of backgrounds. So I see uh, people from psychology, I see people from management, I I see a lot of people from uh, library science which shows one thing that everybody is interested in numbers. Uh, all subject areas have numbers involved in it. And uh, people would love to know as to how to make beautiful graphs. So data visualization is an art and a science that everybody should know. And that is why I said that congratulations to all of you that you've taken this step to come and learn how to make not only beautiful graphs, but also graphs that actually make a lot more sense than the usual ones that we see. Now, when I talk of data visualization, you know, why do I visualize data? You know, there are some very basic tools of uh, making graphs also. So Microsoft Excel has a very basic tool of making graphs. Why do I need a complicated software like Tableau to show me a graph, maybe a, you know, a more complicated looking graph, which might end up confusing everybody. Now, there can be two reasons why you need to get into advanced data visualization. Number one is exploratory reason. 
your typical excel sheet contains numbers if you make certain graphs you will probably find out patterns which you could not imagine just by looking at an excel sheet or even a simple let's say a bar graph there are various kinds of graphs that have come which show a lot of patterns in the data so if you just want to explore your data more to further your analysis you want to see what is the story in my my data uh, so dr dr gangli spoke about storytelling uh to tell a story you need to know the story too so exploratory reason is first you explore the data you find out what the data is telling you how the data is talking to you the second one is the actual storytelling explanatory data a uh, lot of uh, of us uh, here are teachers uh, i see a lot of participants uh, teaching in various institutions uh, you always need to explain in a better manner and all of us uh, would agree that uh, visual uh, explanation is uh, a very effective way of uh, presenting uh, not only numbers but uh, information in general so two reasons exploratory and uh, explanatory these are the two reasons you need to learn you should learn uh, data visualization and of course a very important reason and not the least of all it's always good to have good looking graphs you know you will never nobody will ever say that you know uh, why is it uh, why is it you know something is a too beautiful graph no graph is too beautiful the only thing is that you need to balance the uh, the beauty with what the message is uh, needs to be conveyed it should not become too beautiful it also should be informative so the balance between information and beauty has to be maintained in any data visualization so i'll stop the uh, the you know the the qualitative part now and just uh, jump on to how do you create graphs now uh if we go around uh, uh anywhere right now the most important topic that is uh, that is being discussed is the coronavirus epidemic that the whole world is facing and if you open news channels if you see newspapers you know you will see a lot of graphs you will see a lot of numbers being thrown around so uh, people are interested in uh, okay what's the uh, you know what's the growth of the uh, number of active cases uh, how many people are dying uh, how many people are recovering you know what is the what is the information uh, with regard to disease because every every minute you're getting new new kind of information and uh, at the end of the day people are worried and they want to know what's going on now with respect to india uh the ministry of health and family affairs uh, every day puts out uh, numbers with respect to the confirmed cases uh, with respect to the uh, the recovery uh, rates the death rate in every state uh so uh today's session i will tell you how to use that data to create graphs which tell you a story which help you explore what lies beneath those numbers and also make you know beautiful looking graphs aesthetic graphs you know as we call in our columns aesthetically pleasing so i'll just share my screen with you as to how this is done uh so this is uh, this is uh, what i call as tableau public not what i call it what is called as tableau public. Tableau Public is a software uh, which is used for data visualization. Uh, good thing is that it does not, uh, at the very basic graphs, it does not require a lot of coding. Coding is required for advanced graphing, but uh, for basic graphs, mostly it has a drag and drop uh, sort of a, a working, so which makes it easier to work with. It, it it's not really a rocket science. Let me tell you that. So uh, Tableau has a free version called as Tableau Public. Tableau Public, you can go to the uh, to the Tableau website and download by entering your email address, and you can download the app onto your computer. And once you download the app uh, and you will open, you will find this screen. Now, before you get to this screen, I'll tell you a, a you know a very fundamental thing, which is the most 
useful thing ever you will find in any data visualization session. Do not jump onto the tool. Firstly, work on the data that you have. Trust me, like uh, whenever I create graphs, uh, I would say 70% to 80% of my time is, uh, is spent in making my data perfect. So if, uh, if there's, a, there's a whole stream called as data cleaning, uh, because uh, the data that you usually get is raw data. You don't get it in a form that you, you, would, uh, you would want it to be in. Sometimes there are a lot of missing values. Sometimes, uh, you know, there are spelling mistakes. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things uh, that are there uh, in an Excel sheet that you need to clean up, which is called as data cleaning. But that is a completely separate uh, topic in itself. I think it would require another session. I'll give you an example of the data I just spoke of. The Ministry of Health and Family Affairs data. It's on the website and published every day, uh, which is great. Yeah, so this is the data that we're talking about. If you notice the first row, so any Excel sheet is divided into rows and columns. So these are the columns and these are the rows. So the first row of your Excel sheet, whenever you're working with Tableau and most of statistical softwares anywhere, the first row of your Excel sheet has to be the name of your variable. Again, for the uninitiated, what is a variable? A variable is anything which changes value. So let's say a cases is a variable. So number of cases in every state is different. So the value of this variable changes. State in itself is a variable because name of every state is different. It's a qualitative variable. Case is a quantitative variable. So the first row is the name of the variable. If you have an Excel sheet where the first row is not the name of the variable. It is anything else. It is a blank row. Tableau would have difficulty in recognizing what is your variable name. So as you can see, we have all the uh, states there uh, and the data, and we are absolutely ready now to jump onto Tableau and see uh, what graphs we can make. So I will go to this icon. Uh, again, Tableau recognizes a lot of kind of uh, uh, sources of data, like a text file, a PDF file, and other files that are there, other formats that are there. But mostly, uh, the most prevalent form of data is the Microsoft Excel, and which I will be using. So I will be clicking on this, and I will be selecting wherever my data is. I will be selecting that particular sheet, I will say open. Now, this is the screen where your Tableau reads your data from whatever Excel sheet that you have, uh, you have uh, put it on. So, uh, as you see, in my Excel sheet, there was only one sheet. So it is sheet one. If there was another sheet, the Tableau would have shown that sheet also. And I would have had to uh, click and drag it here so the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Tableau would read that particular sheet. So the point is that if you have multiple sheets in an Excel, you can tell Tableau which sheet do you want to work with. You can also join sheets, but then that's another uh, topic altogether. So as you see, uh, Tableau has uh, picked up this data. Uh, so you have states, cases recovered. Now, because our variables were in the first row in the Excel sheet, uh, Tableau has recognized our variables. You can also uh, rename your variable uh, here in Tableau, although that would not change the name of the variable in the Excel sheet. It will only change the variable in the Tableau uh, that you're working with. Now we'll go to uh, sheet one, because this is the sheet where we'll be, we will be creating our graph. As you can see, uh, there are various uh, marks in, in, uh, in front of our variable name. Now this hash mark tells us that Tableau has recognized automatically 
that this particular variable is a quantitative variable, which is also called as a measure. And Tableau somehow thinks that this state is a, just a qualitative variable. Although we want to tell Tableau that look, it's not just a qualitative variable, it is also a, it, it has a geographic dimension to it. So how we can do that? We can click on this ABC, we can go to geographic role, and we can tell Tableau that look, it is a state. Now you will see that there's a globe icon that comes next to this variable. So that means that Tableau has recognized, Tableau has understood that this variable is a geographic variable that we are talking about. Now, what I want to do, I want to, I want to create a map. So you must have seen those fancy maps on television and on, uh, on newspapers where you have a map of India and they show which state has the, how many number of cases. You know, some state has a darker color, some state has lighter color. This is what exactly I'm going to teach you today. So all you need to do, remember I told you it's a drag and drop uh, software mostly. You click on states and you click control. And so I want to show the number of cases in each state. So I click on state, click control and click cases. So both of them are selected now. I pick this up, drag it to this area. So I drag it to this area. Now this is not showing anything because I haven't told Tableau which particular country am I talking about. So I go to this 33 unknown. So 33 unknown means that there are 33 states, 33 values. Tableau is not is saying that, look, I don't recognize them. Please help me. What are you talking about? So I go to edit locations. Now, of course, these states do not belong to the United States. So I will tell Tableau that, look, these states are Indian states, right? And I say, okay. Still, there might be certain names. Remember I told you, clean your Excel sheets. For example, there is a spelling mistake in one of your states. So let's say in Assam, you forget one S, Tableau will not recognize. So you'll have to change the name of the state so that Tableau may be able to recognize. If you put the name Dadra, Dadra uh, and Nagarhaveli, now it recognizes that there's a Dadra and Nagarhaveli. Remember, it also gives you an option, internal latitude and longitude. For example, you give a name that even if the spelling is right, but Tableau does not recognize it for some reason. You can also provide the exact latitude and longitude of that particular place so that Tableau is able to place it on an, uh, on a map. So since it recognizes here, Dadra and, Dadra and Nagara really, I say, okay. And now Tableau is clear that look, this is India that we are talking about. So here you see, uh, we have created a map wherein it is showing each state with the number of cases. It might look uh, very uh, appealing to people, some people, but uh, let me tell you, not to me. So what I want to do is I will uh, I would want to uh, improve this uh, map altogether. So firstly, uh, I will notice that uh, it is not showing politically correct boundary of India. Uh, now this is a solution that I found myself, uh, and you will do well to uh, do it also uh, whenever you're creating Indian map. So you go to file, go to workbook locale and you click more in the locale you specify english india you say yes and now you see the map is politically correct map of india so perfect now let's move ahead so what i want to do now i want to fill each state with a color not with a single color State having more number of cases should be dark colored and state having lesser number of cases should be uh, lightly colored. So what I do, I click this and I simply drag it to color. Magic happens. Magic has happened and you see now states are colored according to the number of cases that you have. You have a scale here 
So one is the lowest and 44,582. So this is the limit with which this uh, Tableau data is working with. Uh, and each state, you can see that, you know, uh, you have the number of cases and the particular color associated with it. What you can do while you're explaining to an audience, you can always go over a state and it will show some sort of information. Uh, you go to Gujarat, you see number of cases, you go to Rajasthan, you see this, Haryana, and all that, and you can explain very well to your audience what is going on in India. Let's say you you go over a state and you want to add more information. Let's say along with states and cases, I also want to see uh, the number of recovered in every case, every state. So I click recovered and take it to tool tip. Now if I see any state, I also get the recovered data from it. So till now, what we've done is we have created a map. We have filled every state with the color. Uh, according to the number of cases it has. And we have added some additional information that we want. You can always take away, let's say you don't want to have number of recovered cases in a tool type. You can drag it from away from here. Now your information will not show. Let me explain what was this. So here it is showing that number of cases is a variable which is colored. State come in detail and number of cases also come in labels. If I remove this, label would not be there. So it will not show the number of cases. If I want to put it back, I'll drag cases to label. Now it again is showing uh, the number of cases with respect to every state. Uh, Dr. Ganguly mentioned about color. Let me tell you, color is one of very important elements in any data visualization. We do not take color very seriously. I go around uh, watching a lot of presentations also, and I see that people are not very color conscious. They're very color conscious while it's, uh, you know, with respect to their clothes, but they're not very color conscious with respect to their graphs. So you should see what colors are you using? Are they aesthetically appealing? Are you using too many colors? Are you using too less colors? Are you using colors which don't go together? So let's say you're using a green and a yellow, which don't go together at all. So I would say that uh, you, need to, you need to be very conscious of which colors you use in your, uh, in your graphs, because that really makes or breaks your uh, presentation in terms of the seriousness it shows to the audience. And it makes your graphs obviously look a lot better. In Tableau, you can change your color by clicking this and going to edit colors. And Tableau will give you multiple options. You want all blue, you want all orange, you can have a combination of two colors, you can have a combination of three colors. So let's go with the combination of three colors. So let us look at, uh, 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 here's my favorite, red, green, gold, right? So I will, so what it means is, what it's showing is that fewer cases, it will show red and higher the cases, it will show green. But again, I said choosing colors is very important. You also got to choose colors with what colors are usually associated with. More cases should not be associated with green. They should be associated with red. So what I will do is Tableau gives you that option. You click reversed. Now you will see more cases will be shown in red and less cases will be shown in green. So I will click apply, boiler. My graph changes. Now you see lesser the amount of cases, the greener the color and more the amount of cases, the redder the color. Uh, but I think there's a bit of a problem here. Now I will talk about uh, a property of any data set, which is called as distribution. What is your distribution of data? What do I mean by it? What kind of values does it carry? Uh, are there a lot of values? Let's say our range is clearly between one and 44,582. But if there are a lot of values below 10,000, right? 
So I think there's a lot of diversion there. Are there a lot of values above 20,000? What number of values are there in terms of, uh, of the range? Where uh, do ranges lie? So uh, here, uh, there seems to be a problem because uh, uh, if you go to advanced and see the center, so when Tableau is assigning colors to this map, it will, uh, it will ask the user, okay, where do you want the color to change from green to red? Right? At which stage do you want the color to change from green to red? Now, here you see the center is defined as automatically by Tableau as defined as 22,291. But the fact of the matter is that there are not a many, uh, many states, there are not a lot of states above 22,291. So the middle value should be somewhere at the lower portion. So that color scheme will come out uh, in a better manner also. So if I change my center to let's say, so here if I see uh, 5,000 seems to be a good number where you can uh, keep your uh, sort of middle. Now you see uh, things have changed. Now, uh, you know, a lesser amount of, uh, so anything and all the states below 5,000 are colored differently. All the states above 5,000 but lesser than 10,000 are colored differently. Uh, any, all states above 10,000 but below 20,000, 40,000 are colored differently. And of course, you know, the extreme states are colored in red. So that is a, that is a more uh, appealing sort of a color distribution that we have right now. You can also increase the number of stepped colors. Let's say you increase it to 50. You will see that there's a slight change in the way the color pattern follows. So this is how you can play around with colors in, uh, in maps in Tableau. Now, uh, you can make a lot more other changes uh, with respect to this particular map. How? You go to map and you go to map layers. What am I talking about? So you have, uh, you know, a map of India, but I can also see Nepal, Bhutan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, China. I don't want to see all this. I don't want to see all these uh, borders and the provincial borders within each country that they're showing. I don't want to see, you know, uh, all the noise around my map of India. Very simple. Here in map layers, you just unselect all this. And India in the map will be left alone to itself with no disturbance. So now you see this is a much, much better aesthetically appealing uh, concentrating on India sort of a map. So what uh, have we achieved by creating this map? Very simple. I see in one shot what state is doing, you know, how well with respect to coronavirus in terms of the number of cases. Uh, so it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's just like a one-stop shop if you want to know about number of cases in India. Uh, you can do something very similar if you want to plot number of uh, uh, deaths. You know, you can you can go to states. You can uh, click. And drag here. And you don't have to go through all that, uh, you know, uh, United States uh, and everything because now Tableau has understood you're talking about India. You can again go to uh, 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 death, we'll go to color. So now you see which states has more number of death. And similarly, you can do uh, different changes with respect to your maps as I just told you. Uh, so, this is, so this is how a map is made. Obviously you can do a lot more things, but that is to an advanced stage. So I'll leave to that here. Now, uh, here we have seen number of deaths as an absolute number. What if I want to sort of make a calculation? Because it's not the number of deaths, but the number of people out of the cases who have died 
which makes more sense so what i'm talking about is the death percentage how many people out of the number of people who are uh, contracting this disease are getting uh, you know uh, are are in fact uh, not surviving so i want to call calculate the death percent i want to calculate recovered persons percent tableau gives you that flexibility uh, of calculating uh, whatever you want to calculate out of the variables that you've got and create new variables let's see how it does that if you go to uh, analysis and say create calculated field let's say i want to name my field as or variable as death percent so right i give the name and i start the formula here so i will say sum uh death tableau has recognized that there's a variable death that you want to use and it will automatically show you and you will get it close the bracket divide sum of a uh, total number of cases again tableau has recognized that you have a variable that you are talking about close the bracket then put all of this expression in a bracket into 100 now tableau is saying that this calculation is valid let's say uh, i remove a bracket tableau will say that this calculation contains errors so it will automatically tell me that there is a syntax error now what have i done here so i'll go a little slower i want to calculate the death percent percentage of people who have died out of the number of people who have got the disease so how do what do i do when i calculate percentages so i want to i want to have numerator as the number of deaths in a particular state i want to have the denominator as number of cases in a particular state and obviously i want to multiply it with 100 to get the actual percentage and this is just a syntax that i have used for tableau to create that particular variable now tableau has said that this calculation is valid i will click okay you will notice that there's a new variable that has come up here in that percent if you go to my data source sheet again you will see that tableau has calculated that percent with respect to every state one very important thing i want to tell you here is that tableau will create this variable only in tableau your sheet the original sheet that you were using the excel sheet that you were using will not you know have that new variable so there will be no change in that so be mindful of that similarly i want to calculate uh, create a recovered percent field so i want to see how many people have recovered in every state it will remain the same sum uh, recovered close the bracket divided by sum cases close the bracket create the whole expression in a bracket and divide this whole expression into 100 this calculation is valid i click okay i get recovered percent beautiful isn't it now let us see how to use uh like the previous graphs you can make the map of india say, seeing that which state has uh, more uh, death percent which state has less uh, death percent but i want to do something different remember dr gangoli spoke about scatter plots a scatter plots is a fancy name for a graph which is a which contains a x axis and a y axis and all the data between those axes uh so it is used to basically see the relationship between two variables so whenever we are studying uh, two variables we want to see if one is increasing how is the other uh, behaving if one is decreasing how is the other variable behaving let's say we have two uh, two variables so let's say i'm i'm calculating temperature and rainfall for every state so which state has high temperature and high rainfall which state has low temperature low rainfall which state has high temperature low rainfall and so on so i will plot temperature and rainfall on x and y axis i'll just show you how what we do here in uh, with respect to this coronavirus data so 
x and y axis. Now, x axis is a horizontal axis, y axis is a uh, vertical axis. Now, uh, when we say horizontal axis, the x axis, we mean a row. In fact, we, uh, we mean a column. And when we say a vertical axis, we mean a row. So let's see what am I talking about. Uh, let's say I want to plot number of cases on x-axis and number of, uh, in, in fact, uh, percentage of death on y-axis. So I will take uh, cases on to uh, x-axis. So I will go to columns. I will take 10%, I will go to rows. You will see here that I have created a graph. Now this is a X axis and this is a Y axis. But it's showing me only one point. Well, with Tableau, it sort of aggregates all of your data. So it adds up all the calculation and uh, gives it as a sum. You don't want to do that, so one thing that you will do is go to analysis and uncheck this aggregate measures. Voila, now I have all those states. So this is what some state which is having cases 13,000, death of six, death rate of 6%. This is some state with the same figure and so on. So we don't know which states are which, which states are which. So again, the same procedure. You go to states and drag them to label. Now I I know which points uh, show which particular state. So you see, uh, Maharashtra has very high number of cases and a very, uh, you know, sort of a medium death percentage. West Bengal has a low number of cases but very high death rate. So does Meghalaya. So now this is what a scatter plot does. It shows the distribution of all the points on an X and Y scale. So now I see, you know, which states stand where in terms of that percentage. Now aesthetically, I can do a lot of things. I can uh, make these uh, solid circles. I can change the color, whatever color you want to put. You know, it's a death rate, so let's put a red. Right, so I have uh, I've changed the color. Uh, let's say I want to change the background. I go to format and I go to shading. Shading will open up sheets, rows and columns. So I'm talking about the sheet. So worksheet color you can change here. You know, again, color is again very important in terms of uh, in terms of making your graphs look beautiful. And you should always refer to which colors go with what, uh, you know, what pair of colors go together well in order to make uh, graphs which, which, look, uh, which look good. So I'm liking this background with this color. So I'll keep it, okay. Now you see there are a lot of white lines that are here in this graph. You will find this in a lot of Excel sheets also. It does not look good, personally speaking. Although it's very useful to some people, some people find it very good, but it's my personal uh, sort of uh, observation that grid lines don't really look good. So I want to remove them. So uh, I go to these lines and grid lines, I will say none. So you see all the grid lines have disappeared. Also you see there's a zero line that uh, Tableau automatically gives us. We can say no to that also. So there's no zero line. So now uh, I have the scatter plot. <clears throat> One thing you should do with your any graph is give it a title. You can give a title here in Tableau. You go to edit title. You can give a title of uh, uh, number of cases versus uh, death percent. I always believe uh, in giving full titles. Uh, so that your reader is able to understand, okay, what's going on, you know, with your data. Uh, 
you can do a lot of things. You can create a bold, you can put it in middle, or you can put it left line. You can change the color of this also. And if you see, you will have your title. Oh, this color doesn't look good. I'll change this color right away. I'll go to under title. I think black was looking okay. So I'll put black. So this is it. This is your uh, this is your scatter plot. Uh, again, uh, there is no end to what you can do with your analysis. Let us stay um, to this whole or uh, this whole into you know grids into quadrants. So I want to see which states have very high number of cases and. Uh, very high death percentage. I want to see which states have low number of cases, high death percentage, and so on. So I will sort of create a benchmark in every uh, variable. What do I mean by benchmark? If the cases above twenty thousand, if cases are above twenty thousand, that will fall in a high cases category. If the death rate is above two point five percent, that will fall in a high death rate category. So what do I do? I create a reference line. I go to cases, access, and I right, uh, right click. I will say add reference line. You will show up this uh, pane. Uh, I can put an average value here also. So a reference line, so an average of three point, oh, sorry, 3,733 will show up. I can put a particular uh, value also. I can put a minimum, maximum, total, sum, median, but I want to put a particular value. So I would say anything above, let's say 5,000 cases is a high number. So I have added my reference line. Similarly, I can add my reference line here. Uh, constant. I want to define as let's say two point five percent is my death rate. So now I have I have divided my whole of this graph into two areas, four areas, four quadrants. Uh, you will see that this uh, particular state, Maharashtra, which is not doing particularly well in terms of coronavirus right now, is it stands out. We have a term in statistics for such values. It, it is called an outlier. Now, outliers are usually problematic, mostly in calculation, but in visual analysis also. What is this outlier doing? It is sort of compressing all of this data here to the left. So all of these are missing out on analysis, and this is uh, attracting most of the attention. Now, there's a, a solution to that here also, because I know that, okay, Maharashtra is a case that I can in my presentation, I can always cite that, okay, Maharashtra is, is a case which has a very high number of uh, cases, and I can give the details in my presentation. But I don't want this to be a part of my graph because it's sort of distorting my graph. I can always edit my access. I right click on cases, I go to edit access. Uh, Tableau always gives you an option of defining your range of access. So right now it is, you know, from minus 2000 something to 45K. I want to say that, look, we put it from zero. Two. So let's say I want to uh, sort of limit it to this area. So the maximum comes as 20,000. Now I, I can make a lot of sense with this graph because uh, Earlier, these points were, you know, too compressed towards the left. So I could not really... Now, why was Tableau not taking a zero value? Because these sort of, these points here are getting cut. So I may want to change this. I may say that, okay, you know, you can give a minus value. So I'll say, look, like, minus minus 100. So these sort of, these points get some sort of a, a, a breathing space. <coughs> So uh, I have divided them into quadrants, but how will my user know which quadrant is which? So I will have to label these quadrants. 
in statistics, we call it as annotations. What do we do? We right click in this area, we annotate, and we say area. So we say high cases, high death rate. Now we can, you know, the, our audience can know, even if we're not speaking in this, while we are giving this uh, graph, let's say we are publishing it in a newspaper. So the audience will know, okay, these Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat are in this category of high cases and high death rate. Similarly, we can annotate for this area. Low cases, high death rate. And similarly, we can do for these two areas also. So what this analysis has given us is told us, okay, which states are doing how well in terms of high number of cases and high number of death rate, high amount of death rate, and so on. It, it sort of, it, it gives a more uh, valuable picture when we are analyzing, uh, you know, this sort of an information. So these are scatter plots. These are reference lines. This is how you can use them. This is how you can label them, uh, you know, uh, this is, this is something uh, is very useful. Whenever you're studying two variables, scatter plots are very useful. Now, uh, I will show you uh, something you may be more familiar with called as bar graphs. So let's say I want to compare uh, states with respect to their cases, their death percent and recovered in one single graph. So I go to states, put it in rows, I go to uh, cases, put it in columns, and you see it has immediately created a graph for us. Uh, what do we do? Uh, it is not in an order, you know, it is a haphazard. So we want it to be in a uh, decreasing order. So we go to here and we say decreasing order. So you see, by decreasing order, you have all the cases. But it's not showing number of cases. So you go to cases, drag it to label. <laughs> now you show the number of cases. Similarly, I want to see that percent in the same graph. Take that percent, take it to columns. So it will, on its right side, it will show that percentage for that very state. I can also, also take recovered percent here. It will show recovered, uh, sorry, this is something wrong. Yeah, I think uh, here we have aggregated the uh, percent. So instead of aggregations, we can. Uh, okay, I think there is some problem there. Okay, so let me just concentrate on uh, number of cases. I can change the color of labels however as I want. I can put it as a uh, decreasing, uh, sorry, increasing uh, order also. I can change, you know, I can switch rows and columns here. So you have, uh, now you have states on uh, X axis and you have cases on Y axis. Uh, one particular tip I'll give you, wherever possible, uh, you know, make horizontal diagrams like this. Because usually what happens is that if I read this graph, to read the name of cases, I have to sort of tilt my head. You know, because uh, it's, it's coming uh, you know, in this slanted sort of a position. So it's always better for our audience to read if you have your uh, qualitative uh, variable 
on your y-axis. So this is what you can do with your bar graphs. So the last I will come with is uh, something called as a tree map uh, that Dr. Ganguly showed to you. So let's say uh, states, I want to see uh, which states are how many cases, not in a map, but in a tree map. So I'll select both, drag it here. Tableau automatically will, uh, because it's a geographical variable, Tableau will automatically show a map. But here it's a feature that Tableau gives us. Tableau shows us in this show me feature, what all possible graphs you can make with this data. You can make a horizontal bar graph. You can make a stacked bar graph. You know, you can make a bubble chart. But I want to make here a tree map. Now this shows us, it's a sort of, it's a rectangular shape, wherein area of each state is bigger, the higher the number of cases. So I want to see how many cases are in each state. I will, I will drag it to label. Now with the name of state, it also shows me the number of cases. So Maharashtra is biggest, then comes uh, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Delhi, and then um, these states are in the middle. So it's very clearly showing you which are the case, uh, states with high value, which are the case, uh, states with lower value. You know, on a map, you, could, you have to find out for yourself. So this is something called as a tree map. So here there are, you know, smaller number of cases, smaller number of states with lower number of cases that are here in this tree map. So again, you can change the color of the tree map to whatever you like, you do edit colors, you know, you do a red gold, if anybody likes red gold. So it's, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? From a tree map, you must have seen something called as word clouds. Now, word clouds are where, uh, you know, you have a group of uh, words, uh, let's say in a, in, in a particular page, uh, let's say there are 500 words. So how many words, uh, you know, what's the frequency of words? So if the word coronavirus is appearing 10 times on that page, so that, you know, on a word cloud, that uh, the size of that word will be that much larger. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Very simply, when you create a tree map, you can go from here to text. What do you see? Maharashtra is coming out as red and as the biggest word. Andaman Nicobar is coming out as a very small word because the number of cases are as such. So this is something called as the word cloud. It's a very, very impressive sort of a visualization that you can use in your presentations. You know, you can, if you want to show, you know, which uh, particular uh, variables have larger values, which particular uh, variables have uh, lesser values, you can always show through a word cloud. Something in a uh, map, just to conclude, I want to also tell you that in a map, you can almost always, so let's say I want to see how are Southern states doing uh, as against Western states, Northern states, or Eastern states. So in a map, you can always select. You can go here and select, so this is called a lasso selection. Or what's the difference between lasso selection and all these sort of other selection? So let's say I, I, I take a rectangular selection. If I take a rectangular selection, I can only select rectangularly. You know, I can only select rectangularly. I take a circular selection, I can only select circularly. But let's say I want to, to I don't want to follow any pattern while selecting any state. I go to a lasso selection. Now I can move around, click and move around anywhere. So I want to see Southern states. I can just take all the Southern states. The moment I do this, it is showing me that there are 66,334 cases that have uh, occurred in South India, in seven states of South India. Uh, I want to see Western cases for Gujarat and Pakistan. Combined have 19,762 cases. I want to see Eastern states combined have 7,446 cases. I want to see Central states, I'm sorry, 
6,342 cases. I want to see in other states 10,903 cases. So this is a very important tool that we can use when we are using maps uh, in terms of our selection. We can also uh, zoom in and zoom zoom out. I want to zoom a particular area. I want to concentrate on UP. I can zoom in, right? I can similarly zoom out like this. I can move around my map like this here. Perfect. Now, uh, the last point that I want to uh, show you. Now, uh, here we have seen a map of India. What about the world? What's happening in the world? Uh, I've seen a lot of television coverage. I've seen a lot of newspaper coverage of this pandemic. Uh, but I'm yet to see a very good map uh, showing me that, uh, okay, around the world, what is the picture with respect to each country in terms of number of active cases? So let's say I want to do that. I have a sheet which deals with that also. So this is it. Uh, this is from a site called worldometer.org. Uh, here we have, again, in the first row, you have all the variables. So country, total cases, new cases, you know, uh, new deaths, and so on. And then the values of those variables. So this is absolutely clean uh, data sheet, except for the fact that there are some missing values. Now I want to uh, analyze this particular sheet. Now I already have a sheet here in Tableau, which I have connected. I want to uh, add a new sheet. How to do that? You go to data, you go to new data source. Again, go to Excel. Have the new Excel sheet open. Now the new sheet will come. And then you can now work on this particular sheet. So if you want to work on the previous sheet, you can click here. If you want to work on the new sheet, you can always click here. So you go to country and you go to number of active cases. You drag it. Now it's showing me a world picture, but this is a very messy sort of uh, you know, picture. What I want to do is I want to remove all the labels. So remove it. Uh, right. I don't want to have these points. Let's say what. Let's work these points. So I want to. I want this point to be larger. Uh, larger the number of cases. So I drag country. In fact, I drag uh, cases to size. So here, USA has a larger circle because it has a larger number of cases. Then comes Russia and then comes India. India also has a significant size of the circle now. But this is again not a very helpful sort of a map. So I will sort of, uh, uh, you know, let this go. And I will come back to my color. Now we have a world map. Beautiful. So I can move around the map by selecting this. Now we have a proper map here. So all the lesser number of uh, cases are in light green. And uh, more the number of cases are in darker blue. I can always change again the color scheme. Uh, let's go to the uh, red green gold again. So what's it? Increase the number of steps. 50, let's say. Again, our uh, center is somewhere where there are not a lot of values. So uh, we'll have a lesser amount of center. We'll say, let's say 10,000. Right. Now this makes a lot more sense. Now the lighter, you know, yellow is giving us, you know, countries which have less than 10,000 cases. So we have Eastern Europe, you know, West, Western Europe has a lot of cases. So the shade is darker. Russia, the shade is getting alarmingly darker. Canada has very dark shade. India has very dark shade, relatively. Brazil has dark shade. And of course, there is United States. So here it is, you know, on a single uh, shot, you see what's happening around the world. One last thing I would like to know, uh, like to tell you, if you want to make it a full screen, make it a full screen, very simple. And press escape and you're back to this thing.
So this is how you create uh, visualizations using Tableau. Uh, one question uh, I think a lot of people have is that, what do I do with this? Uh, so you can create an account on Tableau and you can save these uh, worksheets on Tableau server, on Tableau website. And you can go to a Tableau website, you can create your own profile and save your worksheets. And people can look at your work. Uh, you can refer people to, you can embed, embed your uh, worksheet to your own website. Uh, if you don't want to do that, uh, let's say you, you know, you're working with some data which is sensitive, you can always take a screenshot and use it in your presentations. So this is what the free version allows us to do. So this is uh, what it is. I think I have, uh, you know, made a very adventurous, uh, uh, you know, quest of uh, uh, teaching you a lot of new maps in, I think, less than one hour, probably. Uh, I hope that you're going back uh, with, uh, you know, increased knowledge of creating graphs, which not only look good, but provide a lot of insights uh, into what you're looking at. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mukul. So uh, before I'm taking some questions for the speaker and uh, so we do have the few announcements for all the participants. A uh, lot more people are requesting in the chat box, they need certificates. So when I announced the program, I just must tell you, there is the no certificate issue for this program. So don't, put any query by mail or by phone for the certificate. Another uh, session recording. Yeah, definitely you will get the session recording. So you can uh, see on the YouTube channel of Moving World, after just two hours this program, you find the, all the uh, recording of this session on that YouTube channel. Third one, if your query are not covered in this session, you can mail us on webinar dot twenty twenty at gmail dot com. So your question will is well taken and send it to the uh, relevant speaker so they can answer you on mail. Fourth one is uh, yeah collaboration. If you need any uh, if you uh, need any collaboration for this kind of webinar seminar conference management system, so you can visit or partner with the Moving World. So uh, that website is www.movingworld.in. So they may help you to organize this kind of webinar, seminar, and conferences. Now I come to the, I, I uh, from the ch chat box, I had taken four questions. That definitely three questions is for Mukul sir. And one question I am giving to the Shantanuji. So uh, first three questions, uh, Mukul sir, for you. This is the uh, first question is given by uh, Mr. Praveen Kumar. Can we export SPSS data and can we use SAS for this? Mukul sir. Uh, frankly speaking, I have little information on that, but you can always check on the tablet website. So I will not like to uh, make guesses and misinform. Okay, another question, sir. Can data from SPSS be exported to Tableau? Isn't that the same question? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yes, sir. Third one from uh, Dr. V. Roja. Uh, that is also for uh, Mukulji, for you only. Can we plot survival curve? I don't know this uh, terminology. You may answer if you understand the questions. Uh, can? You, you can, as far as I know, you can. But I think you'll have to integrate R and Tableau for that. Okay. And another question is from uh, Prashanta Kumar Mandal. I mm -hmm. transfer this question to Ganguly ji. So, uh, what are the data analysis software for LIS field available? Library information science field available. What is the data analysis software? So, Shantanu sir, I request you to answer this question. Well, uh, see, data, you need to understand there are three major components into it. One is your data uh, two major component. There is a difference between these two. One is called data analysis and another is called data analytics. There is a difference between these two. So data analysis, like information science, you can use 
Like for example, you can have the data in your um, Excel also. But what is most important is how you create the analytics of it. Number one and number two, you have the visualization. So the LIS this particular many of them are the LIS they can get the data, they can derive the data from their, uh, from their they can source the data, put it on a CSV file as well as on the Excel file they can have, and then they can use the Tableau platform for visualization purposes, and it will give you a lot of you know obviously. So there is nothing that is exclusive to Anybody can use any platform. Only thing is that you understand. Kind of data you are playing on. Need to be very careful about the data. That's what I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gamuli. Now it's the time to uh, give thanks to all the participants and uh, as well as. Uh, one, uh, one moment. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I see some questions with respect to uh, how to use these graphs and maps in PPT. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, and word files. Now, as I told uh, in the uh, when I concluded my presentation, uh, you can export workbooks to Tableau, but that's only to Tableau. You cannot export workbooks to uh, PPT and Word. So what you can do is you can take a screenshot of the graphs or maps that you have uh, you have presented or you have created, and paste those screenshots in your Word files, in your PPTs, etc. You can for that for doing that. What you should do is you should label your graphs well, so you don't need to uh, you know have many features of Tableau workbook, uh, so so that nobody needs to go over a state to find out how many cases are. So you should label them uh, accordingly because a screenshot is screenshot. You cannot work with a screenshot; it's just a picture, right? So that is something that you can do for exporting into PPTs and workbook. So thank you, Mukul sir. Uh, and uh, uh, Anand, with your permission, I just want to mention something to all my, the participants here. Yeah, we so will so be so. coming up with more uh, because you know these kind of we will be organizing such kind of webinar. Like, for example, uh, the next webinar we organize on something sixty-five. Where we will uh, uh, very close friends just like uh, for somebody from um, should be you know taking the different models um, office I will be also but we will be also taking some sessions related to you know data storytelling and so um, uh, where myself the school and we would be taking some steps on advanced Excel so uh, there are features of their life we are doing research on a particular area how do you design so those areas we would be trying to ask you can customize whether they are kind of thing it's also going to come up and you can have a real time data itself and you can this is also so for this yeah. kind of it would be coming up very soon so this is just for your and i'm telling all of you i just Chan. saw a question regarding uh, how do we use this in library uh, well, let me tell you that whenever you have any sort of data, qualitative or quantitative, that you can put in an Excel sheet, you can always use it no matter what the profession that you are applying it to. So let's say in a library you have X number of books. You want to find out which books have most copies in my library. You can always use a tree map. You can always use a word cloud. So it, you know, it's again, uh, see data visualization is about creativity. So use your creativity as much as possible. Yes. Thank you, sir. Now this is the time to close the session. And uh, it's, it's, it's a big thank you to uh, Shri Mukul Sharma ji. Uh, he's introduced us the very uh, new tools and technology to handling the data. And I hope all the participants will, all the participants will work on it and uh, they, come across with the new questions and new queries and uh, we do uh, think about it we do have the another session for this uh, as per your query and uh, yeah of course uh, dr ganguly is the hero of our <laughs> lis profession so i get more than <laughs> 100 150 thank you note for the dr ganguly 
कि यू आर कंडक्टिंग सच ए गुड वेबिनार एंड ऑलवेज यू कम फॉर न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी सो थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू नमस्कार